A debate has been pretty prevalent in the Five Nights at Freddy's Fury space for a while, but has made a resurgence lately is the identity of Golden Freddy and who's possessing him. One major aspect of the debate is whether Golden Freddy is possessed by one soul or two, with supporters of both sides dubbing these theories Golden Uno or Golden One and Golden Duo or Golden Both, respectively. Today, I'm going to discuss both sides of the debate and break down why I think Golden Freddy might only have one soul, not two, as many of you might have previously thought. So get ready, theorists, because this theory will be just gold. The idea of Golden Freddy having more than one soul was first proposed by MatPat after the release of the core for FNAF games, where he theorized that Golden Freddy's eyes in the FNAF 3 bad ending look like they're both lit up, unlike the other animatronics only have one of their eyes lit up. It was proposed that the two souls inside Golden Freddy were Cassidy, the fifth MCI victim, and the bite victim from FNAF 4, whose death was caused by a Fredbear animatronic or the fixed version of Golden Freddy. Needless to say, as I'm sure you know, this theory made its rounds very quickly, and became extremely popular both for theorists and the fandom in general. However, the piece of evidence that spawned this whole idea is inherently flawed, and I think Golden Duo might be a big misinterpretation of what's really going on with Golden Freddy. So let's go over the evidence against the theory that there are two souls inside him. Let's start with the bad ending image from FNAF 3. In it, we can see the original FNAF 1 animatronics all with one eye lit up, implying that the souls inside them aren't free. While it does kind of look like Golden Freddy's second eyes lit up, if you really look at the image, that's not really how it works. Brightening it shows that it's clear there's only one light source, and the so-called second eye is just the light reflecting off the inside of the head. But this isn't the only part of FNAF 3 that seems to reject the idea of there being two souls in Golden Freddy. In fact, there's another, Happiest Day. In the collection of minigames leading up to the good ending of FNAF 3, we're working towards freeing the souls of the five MCI victims, Gabriel, Jeremy, Susie, Fritz, and Cassidy, the Golden Freddy Kid. There's only one Golden Freddy Kid at the party the puppet creates, not two. In the good ending, all of Golden Freddy's eyelights are out. If there were two souls in Golden Freddy, only one of the eyes would go out, right? After all, the other animatronics always have one eye lit up, signifying one soul. A piece of evidence many use to support the claim that Golden Freddy is possessed by two kids is the Stitch Ray from the Fazbear Frights epilogues, which contains the souls of two kids, Jake and Andrew. The dynamic between the Stitch Ray and the souls was said by Golden Duo believers to be similar to Golden Freddy. However, this is a huge misinterpretation of the Stitch Ray's role in the Stitch Ray Stingers. Its main objective is to cleanse the world of the agony created by Andrew and everything that happened across Fazbear Frights. Golden Freddy is nowhere once shown to have this protective or caring nature, and is always portrayed as being more vindictive and violent. However, there is one character who has the traits I stated before, and I'm pretty sure you can guess who that is. The Puppet. Now, I'm not saying the Puppet is the Stitch Wraith or anything like that, rather, I wanted to point out that if the Stitch Wraith is meant to be a parallel to anything instead of just being its own character, that parallel is the Puppet, who tries to let the spirits rest across multiple games and not Golden Freddy. Another major pillar holding up this thought is the survival logbook, which shows Mike, or Michael Afton, the owner of the book, communicating with two spirits that change the text of the book. One writes in faded text and one alters the text already in the book. Let's call them faded and altered. The relationship between faded and altered is interesting and is pretty similar to that of Jake and Andrew. Faded can't see and isn't aware of where he is, and Altered can see and guides Faded, just like Jake and Andrew. The idea is that Faded is Crying Child and Altered is Cassidy. Here's the thing though. While that may be the case and the Crying Child could have lived on in the mind of Michael, which is leading him to manifest in the logbook, Altered guiding Faded doesn't make much sense. After all, if we're to believe Crying Child so went into Fredbear during or after the bite of 83 and Cassidy did the same in 85, that's a two year gap, which is definitely long enough for CC to understand where and who he is. If anything, Faded should be guiding Altered instead. And before you say you could just swap the roles and nothing would happen, Altered is very strongly linked to Cassidy and thus to Golden Freddy, while Faded is not. The word search giving us the name Cassidy is connected to Altered, the name on the 5th MCI Gary from FAF 6 is revealed by Altered, and so on. So Altered is most likely Cassidy. As for who Faded is, if not the Crying Child, that's complicated, and I'm not sure I have an answer yet, but it doesn't really matter too much for today's debate. Now, I want to talk about why I think Crying Child possessing Fredder after the bite is unlikely. First off, he doesn't even die at the scene of the bite of 83, as the Night 6 minigame and easter eggs during the night segment strongly suggest he ended up in a hospital, with a flatline and easter eggs of flowers, an IV and pills, respectively. A surprisingly common idea is that William might have taken the crying child's corpse and stuffed him into Fredbear, which is what resulted in the animatronic's possession by the child. However, aside from the fact that there's literally no proof for this, and that it would be extremely difficult for William to sneak his child out of the hospital or his grave and put him in Freddy's or Fredbear's, how would William fit Cassidy's body into Golden Freddy during the MCI if Cece was already there? 
Plus, what does William even gain by putting Crying Child in Fredbear? It's likely he only finds out about possession around DMCI when the kids possess the mascots and the puppet tries to save them. So I think him causing Cece's possession is unlikely. I'm pretty sure he'd have to be in an animatronic in order to possess it. The only option I can see is that maybe some of Crying Child's agony is in Fredbear, but I doubt that he's possessing the animatronic to any capacity. In media separate from the FNAF games, such as the novel trilogy in the movie, Golden Freddy is only possessed by one kid, with the kid being Michael Brooks in the novel is an... Ah, oh, he doesn't have a name, does he? Um, Boy 4 in the movie. While Cass stays in the novel, she's likely the one who possesses Bonnie in that universe instead of Golden Freddy. So with all of this evidence all pointing towards Golden Duo being a huge misunderstanding Scott's been trying to fix for literally years at this point, has anyone else reached a similar conclusion, that there's only one kid in Golden Freddy? Well, of course they have, but a theory that's been floating around recently thanks to dual process theory in their FNAF timeline is that Cassidy and the Crying Child are one and the same, and thus there is only one soul in Golden Freddy. In case you've checked out my Twitter account, which odds are you haven't, and let's be honest, good for you, then you'll know I made a post there talking about how Cassidy Victim, the name of the theory, makes absolutely no sense. Not only does this create the complicated conundrum of Afton quite literally pretending his dead son of two years went missing at Freddy's, it rises in a myriad of other controversial ideas like MCI 83 and the idea that William built the fun times and started remnant experimenting before the bite. Another problem with this theory is that it retcons two characters that were perfectly fine before and turns them into what is essentially a non-Euclidean liquid of weird details and unnecessary complications. While the theory itself doesn't have an instantly creatable argument against it, we need to remember FNAF as a story and we need to piece together a story that actually makes sense, not just combine random characters to simplify things or provide narrative satisfaction when you're just making things more confusing. No hate to dual process and their timeline, as much as I may disagree with it, but cast a victim, as I really like to say around here, feels pointless and contrived. Another thing is that Golden Duo isn't necessary for any major story beat in the franchise. It doesn't explain anything about Golden Freddy's nature or why he does the things he does. I think Bite Victim is merely a plot point for Michael to regret his past actions and go be the night guard at all the different Freddy's locations we've seen him at, since Bite Victim doesn't really participate in the story after his death. His character doesn't require a possession of anyone and acts simply as an incentive for Mike and William to go try and free everyone and form a remnant respectively. However, there is one pretty major point that feels a bit strange without Bite Victim, the It's Me message Golden Freddy is so famous for. However, I also have an explanation for this. It's important to remember that when FNAF 1 came out and It's Me was introduced, there was no Afton family, no Fredbears, no Bite Victim, none of that stuff was planned at the time. You know what was planned though? Five kids going missing at a Freddy's and trying to kill the security guard after possessing the animatronics. So if we piece this into the rest of the lore, we can come to a pretty satisfying conclusion. Cassidy is trying to get Mike to realize that the animatronics are possessed by the kids that went missing on that fateful day. The kids his father murdered. It's me, the kid you know went missing that night at Freddy Fazbear's. So we can already tell that in retrospect, Golden Duo, while admittedly a really fun idea for a story or a U, unfortunately doesn't really fit well into the main FNAF games and sort of just complicates things that don't need to be complicated. Although a widely believed theory for a lot of the community that many believe to be just straight up confirmed, using the evidence I brought up earlier, we can see there's never really been a mention of two kids going into one Golden Freddy mascot costume. If the vengeful spirit is the kid inside Golden Freddy, or is it at least linked to the animatronic, which I believe to be the case, then why do we only see one spirit and not two in Ultimate Custom Night? The events of FNAF World are also interesting since I believe that even though the game is non-canon, the events going on in the background of this goofy fun RPG are telling us how Charlie, the soul inside the puppet, is setting up the happiest day. Although I think happiest day is about Cassidy, I think FNAF World succeeds in freeing Crying Child through the clock ending, giving him his peace. Fellow theorist Raitos has said that the clock ending might represent Charlotte finding Bite Victim's body in the unmarked pile of dirt in the Midnight Motors clearing. And the reason Bite Victim could move on was because, as we found out in Alone Together, souls can only move on if their bodies are found, and Crying Child was hidden for many years. There's a branch of the Golden Duo theory that says Happy's Day frees Crying Child but leaves only Cassidy and Golden Freddy, which supposedly makes more sense. However, as I said earlier, if there were two souls and one was freed, wouldn't one of the lights in Golden Freddy's head stay on? There's also all the stories Candy Cadet tells us in FNAF 6 which are very clearly connected to Molten MCI, or the fear that the MCI ends up in Molten Freddy in FNAF 6, which is very strongly hinted at and confirmed by multiple sources. All these stories are about 5 things, or the MCI, combining it to one, Molten Freddy. Notice how it's 5, not 6. And with that, I think that's everything I've got to say about Golden Uno and Golden Duo. Is this definitive and does this debunk anything forever? No. 
this is just a theory and you're 100% allowed to have your opinion. Just because I think that Midnight Motorist isn't about the Aftons or that Golden Duo isn't canon, that doesn't mean it's true, that doesn't mean you can't disagree. In fact, the best type of comments to read are comments that add more evidence to the side I'm disagreeing with. It gives me loads of insight into things I didn't consider before. But don't worry, your comments telling me I'm a visionary genius are also appreciated. But with that friends, I hope you enjoyed and like and subscribe if you did. But most importantly, keep on theorizing and never stop overthinking. This has been Withered Circle, the Midnight Theorist.